Brad, how you doing? Are you guys ready to win? I'm ready to win. We have an amazing slate. First of all, we're going to kick it off with a prayer. How's that? Please join me on stage, Andy Tobin. Thank you, Jonathan. Before I begin, you just take a moment to uh, think of the Jan Brewer, Governor Jan Brewer's family on the loss of their son today. She sends her best. We gather once again in this very special place, Lord. Some of our friends who are here in only spirit and hope. We remember Arizona Senator John McCain and his family and those who, who are also missing from here, these steps today. May we always remember what he did for our nation and for our state. We pray on this special day of freedom that exists here in America like nowhere else on earth. We pray for our military and our first responders who stand in harm's way to defend our right to even be right here tonight. We ask for wisdom and safe passage for Governor Ducey and Angela and this entire leadership team tonight, these who chose public service, true and sincere public service, they're in the arena for a reason. After tomorrow, may all of us who seek to advance freedom as one party, the American party, may the one who makes peace in the heavens make peace for America makes peace for Israel, makes peace for all the earth. We've asked this in your holy name. And they all said, Amen. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Mayor, would you like to bring your family up? Mayor Mangarelli is, is going to, and his family are going to lead us. They're still getting up here. Right. Sorry. There's a lot of them. Please join our family in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
boy, I tell you what, let's give everybody a welcome that came up here to everybody's hometown. Let's say hello. Isn't it great to be in America today? We got a president that says what he's going to do, and he does what, what he says he's going to do. And what's great about that is we also have a governor that does the same thing. So when you look at making America great again, we're keeping Arizona great as well. Folks, it is great to be here. It's great to see your, your smiling faces. And it's a great welcome to look at all these people behind us. We've got to get them over the hump because our best days are still ahead of us. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thank you. But now I'd like to welcome to the podium Kimberly Yee. and a really warm welcome. Thank you so much for coming out to support our great Republican team. We have a really fantastic slate of Republican candidates up and down this ballot, but we need your help to get us to the finish line tomorrow night. My name is Kimberly Yee. I am currently the Arizona Majority Leader in the Arizona Senate. Uh, but I am a candidate for Arizona State Treasurer. This is an office that manages $15 billion in your tax dollars. So we need a fiscal conservative in this office. I was born and raised here in Arizona. My father is an Army veteran, my mother a public school teacher. I want to keep our great state red. And we can only do that if we elect conservatives in every single one of these seats. My opponent in this race is no conservative. He wants to take your tax dollars and invest it on social justice programs. That gives no return on your investment. He also has put on his own campaign website that he's had his car repossessed and his home foreclosed on, yet he wants to manage our tax dollars. No way. But we can only do this with your help. So tonight, when you go home, call everyone you know and tell them how important every single vote will matter. Thank you so much for coming out today, and God bless you. You know, the Democrats think that their road to taking control of the Senate and taking control of the House with names like Pelosi and Schumer think that that can happen through our state. Send them, yeah, that's pretty funny. It's up to us, each and every one of us, to make sure that we show up to vote. Uh, earlier today, we heard a message from uh, Majority Leader um, Mr. McCarthy and Mitch McConnell and they were talking about the need uh, to show up to vote and that every single race and every single vote was extremely critical that it be delivered tomorrow on election day. We'd now like to hear from Frank Riggs, superintendent, our candidate, superintendent of public instruction. Got it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to be here. Hey, listen, are you ready to make history again from these very historic courthouse steps? Yeah. yeah. Are we going to finish strong and defend the desert? Yeah. And most importantly, are we going to show the pundits, the chattering class, and the liberal media that are predicting a blue wave, they got it wrong, it's a red tsunami coming. Yeah. I'm honored to be the Republican nominee for superintendent of public instruction. I ran for this office because I care about our students and I realize that our students, of course, are the future of our state and our country. I'm a proud Army veteran, I'm a former police officer, and, and I went into education after working with juvenile offenders and at-risk students and realizing, as Frederick Douglass said centuries ago, it's much easier to build strong children 
than to repair broken men. I want our students to learn civics again. I want them to know. I want them to learn about what we stand for and who we are as a country so that they're prepared for active, responsible, adult citizenship under our system of self-government, of, by, and for the people, as Lincoln said at Gettysburg, under a constitutional republic. I want every student in every part of Arizona to get a great education that prepares them to contribute to a healthy, moral, and productive society. That's my commitment to you. I look forward to working with our great governor, our education governor, Doug Ducey. I thank you for, the again, the privilege of being the Republican nominee for superintendent of public instruction, and I ask for your trust and support. Thank you again. You know, there's a, uh, a, a wacky billionaire out of California that thinks that he can come into Arizona and buy us. Have you heard of him? His name is Tom Steyer. Boom. And he's actually targeted some of our candidates personally. <clears throat> and we're here to tell him, no, take your policy and go back to California. Right? Don't California, our Arizona, take your crazy policies back. It's my pleasure to introduce Mark Brnovich. Thank you. It's, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be here to see so many old friends and meet new friends and people that have been with me from the very first time I came up here four years ago to run and Yavapai County is always, um, I've always loved it and it's always loved me back. So thank you all very much Yavapai County for everything you've done. I appreciate it. I, I also appreciate the, fe the fact that we can be in such a large crowd and not one of you decided to take a knee for um, the Pledge of Allegiance. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hua. Anyway, I will tell you, um, I actually am very humbled standing in front of you tonight. Um, you know, as many of you know, I'm a first generation American. My mother had lived through World War II. My family fled communism. And one of the, just standing here on the steps where Barry Goldwater had famously spoke and stood, um, people that I'm fortunate enough to know, Senator John McCain launching his campaigns from these courthouse steps. It's so historic here. It's such a part of Arizona and this rich tradition we have of rugged individualism. Arizona's always been the state from the very beginning. When someone tells us to do this, we're going to do our own thing in our own way, right? <laughs> You gotta be tough to be in Arizona, and I know growing up here, and I will tell you what, that's why I'm so disappointed. As the Attorney General, I have re um, we have received a record amount of individual restitution to consumers that have been victims of fraud and um, consumer scams. We've taken on companies like Volkswagen and Theranos that have stolen from or lied to Arizona consumers. We've ra um, dramatically increased the number of criminal prosecutions intruding drug trafficking cases. We've gone after those that are trafficking in the most vulnerable people in our society, trafficking in young girls and young boys, and dramatically increased the number of prosecutions of human traffickers and human trafficking organizations. Yeah. And, and what's the reward? What's the reward for fighting for federalism, Arizona sovereignty? Is some California billionaire decided and said that I'm one of his top targets. So you may have seen these ads that are a bunch of Bravo Sierra, as we used to say in the military. I don't know if we got any vets here. Yeah. Hua, Army, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll talk slower for the Marines out there. Nah, I, I mean, I'm just, just kidding, just kidding. Come on. I'm an Army guy. You knew I had to say that, right? Yeah. Seriously, the Marines can beat me up, so I apologize ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. But I'll tell you what, in all seriousness, freedom ain't free. And I'll tell you what, as Arizonans, we That's do awesome. not want to Californicate the state, right? See, I'm having a good time. I have been endorsed by guy. the state fire departments, police officers, Federation of Independent Businesses, the chambers, diverse group of people, the Prescott Courier. And I'll tell you what, the reason why is because I have stood for Arizona principles, and we need to make sure that we continue to do so and tell the billion, Bay Area billionaire, Tom Steyer, that he, him and his money is not welcome here. Arizona's not for sale, and neither am I. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Thank you very much, Mark. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, give a few people a shout out, and it's hard to give a shout out to the largest women re women's Republican club in the United States. And Dr. Sensemeyer, who is the Yavapai County Chairman, thank you so much for your work here in this county. Great leadership by great individuals. <clears throat> Gives me great pleasure to introduce Steve Gaynor. Now, I like knowing that somebody who is going to be in this office actually has balanced a budget, actually knows what it means to sign a, a check at the end of the day, and maybe, you know, not take a check until all of your employees have been paid. Not many people on the other side do that, right? Or have had that experience. But Steve Gaynor is a business the owner has, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Steve Gaynor right now. Thank you very much. Hello, Prescott. Yavapai County is my favorite county. Why? As Secretary of State, you are the county in the state with the highest percentage turnout of any county. I want to thank the GOP organization under Chairman Lines, the field supervisors, all the people down to the ones making the phone calls and knocking on doors. It's been a great contribution to my campaign and I appreciate all of you. Number two. I want to say thank you to Governor Doug Ducey for his leadership and the fantastic job he's done for the last four years. We need to give him another four years. When I entered this race, I had two things in mind. One, I wanted to take my business experience to the Secretary of State's office and fix it. I want to make the office run for the benefit of the people of Arizona, straighten out our elections, save the taxpayers money, make our elections secure. Number two, I don't want a Democrat Secretary of State. And I'll tell you why. I've been in Arizona 37 years. All that time I've done business here and in California. In those 37 years, Arizona has improved year by year. I look back and I see what a wonderful state we have, the best state in the union. And I see California, a place that was beautiful 37 years ago, now terrible. Higher taxes, sanctuary cities, one problem after the next. I don't want Arizona to become like California. The Secretary of State's office has about 200 employees, a budget of $25 million, a lot smaller than my business. In this race, we have a clear choice. My opponent is a social worker turned politician. I know how to run a, a business. She has no executive experience. But beyond that, she's for higher taxes. Yeah, I'm not. She's for sanctuary cities. Not for me. She was given a grade of F by the NRA. I'm a life member. But here's where the rubber meets the road. I ran for this office because I, wanna, I want elections to be right for every citizen, regardless of party. Everybody at the end of election should feel like it's been run with integrity. The results are transparent and clean. She says she wants to use the office to elect more Democrats to the legislature. You wouldn't think this, yeah. You, you wouldn't think this race would be close in Arizona, but it is, and here's why. When she said she wanted to elect more Democrats, an organization called iVote came in and gave her $2 million. iVote is is in, yes, is funding seven Democrat Secretary of State candidates around the country. Look at their website. What they say they want to do is do away with voter registration. Yeah. They want to kill the NRA. They want to make it so that our 2020 presidential election tips their way. 
Yeah. Katie Hobbs wants to turn Arizona blue. I vote wants to turn the USA blue. Are we going to let that happen? Okay, then here's what you need to do. Turn out. Turn out your friends. Turn out your neighbors tomorrow and vote. So we run the table tomorrow and keep Arizona red. Thank you. <clears throat> Standing here in front of this courthouse isn't by accident. It is intentional. We Republicans have come to these steps on the eve of every statewide election because of its tradition. It's tradition that was started by Senator Barry Goldwater. It was on these steps that he launched his campaign for president in 1964. And it's where he campaigned the last day before the election day of that same year. It was the late John McCain, someone who loved this state deeper than most of its natives, who made this event a tradition. It is with reverence and reflection that we are also honored to have the late Senator's wife, Cindy McCain, with us here tonight. He left a deep void, and tonight wouldn't be the same without a McCain on this stage. My fellow Republicans, please join us in welcoming Cindy McCain. Thank you. Um, obviously, it's a little difficult for me to be here tonight, but this isn't about me. Uh, the one thing I would pray and wish I would have had my husband with me tonight because it was such a tradition for our family and I think for the state of Arizona. So I'm so grateful that Doug Ducey has decided to keep the tradition going and making sure that Arizona always celebrates what is best about Arizona and Prescott is one of those places. Thank you. I'm certain John would be sentimental if he were here tonight. This was a, always a sentimental stop for him. Every campaign ended here. The presidential race ended here in more ways than one. And, and, uh, but, every, but new beginnings also began from these very steps because the next morning was when the hard work began. So win or lose, for any of you here tonight and those of us on the stage, win or lose, we need to, we need to figure out how we can come together work with our allies and our rivals, and help make this wonderful country better than we found it. Better than we found it. John lost and won a few elections. He would have rather won all of them, but that didn't quite work out. Um, but he always felt the same afterwards. He felt responsible for helping find solutions to America's problems and ready to work with anyone to get it done. Thank you, Governor Ducey. Thank you. And may I say, could this state be any luckier than to have a first lady like Angela Ducey? Isn't she wonderful? So it means a great deal to me to be here, where I've always been on, a, on an election night with my husband. So you allowing me this opportunity to say hello and goodbye to this great tradition means a great deal. Good luck to all of you. And tomorrow, let's greet the new day and get back to work for the state and for the country we love. Thank you. is to introduce our next speaker. And what a wonderful man. And I can think of nobody any better to not fill my husband's shoes, but, but borrow them for a little bit than Senator John Kyle. What a wonderful U.S. Senator. Please, John. Thank you, Cindy, very much. These last many months have been very difficult, but I think you'll agree with me that Cindy McCain has represented her family and her country with dignity and grace and honor, and we thank her for it. <laughs> she has also been leading the fight nationwide and also internationally against the trafficking, particularly of young children, 
that is a scourge really uh, and in the 21st century uh, should embarrass us all. Cindy McCain is leading in the effort to find ways to fight that scourge and to put the people who are in charge behind bars. So th Cindy, thank you for that as well. Now, many friends have said, well, what's it like to go back to the Senate? And first of all, I do want to thank Governor Ducey for appointing me to Senator McCain's seat. And I will tell you that one thing that I've noticed is that with John McCain not there, there's nobody really to hold everybody accountable. That was one of the things that he did very well. He was a presence. And especially during the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, I really wish John had been there. He would have held some people accountable, I can assure you that. <clears throat> well, we have a wonderful state and a great slate of candidates running for statewide offices, starting with our great Governor Ducey. And I want you to remember tomorrow, not just to start at the top with Governor Ducey, but his success can make a big difference, as they say, down ballot. If people recognize that by coming out to vote for Governor Ducey, they also have the opportunity to vote for all of the other office holders and those who are seeking to hold office here. So be sure and remember those other uh, names that are on the ballot, including all the way to your state legislators, who are very, very important. And uh, we've got to work very hard to maintain control of the House and Senate here in the state of Arizona. When, uh, I believe it was 1999, I was offered the opportunity to take on board in my Senate office uh, what they called a fellow, one of a very small number of peoples who the United States military selected to serve on Capitol Hill with members of Congress to learn more about how our government functions, or doesn't function as the case may be. And the major in the U.S. Air Force who came to work for me was Major Martha McSally. Now, Now, Colonel Martha McSally and Representative Martha McSally and soon-to-be Senator Martha McSally. I've been trying to, you know, I'm not running for office anymore, so I'm getting kind of rusty at this. I've been trying to follow Martha around in her campaign and help out where I could, but it's kind of like spend a day with Martha, go home and rest for a day, spend another day with Martha. She is one of the most energetic and um, hardworking people that I've ever met, and I can tell you that the message that my colleagues from the Senate have given to me to pass on to you and others here in Arizona is, please send us Martha McSally. We can use the reinforcements, and she'll be a great colleague. So while here to stump for all of the candidates, I do want to make that special word for Martha. Uh, I would certainly like to be able to serve uh, with my old colleague, Martha McSally. But the final thing that I want to say to all of you is that since I probably won't be here, certainly not campaigning on my own behalf anymore, I want to say thank you to you from the bottom of my heart because Yavapai County and the Yavapai County Republicans have had my back. You have supported me and you have been great folks to work for. And one of the things that uh, I appreciate most about Governor Ducey's giving me the opportunity to serve again are the expressions of gratitude that people have given to me. And as far as I'm concerned, it's all the other way. I owe it to all of my friends who have supported me over the years. So let me just quote I close with a, a quotation from the poet William Butler Yeats. He said, think where man's glory most begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. Several years ago, I was elected to be the chairman of, chairman of Yuma County. And uh, my first Lincoln Day dinner, uh, Senator Kyle was my guest speaker. And I was looking forward to working with him for many years after that. And that's when he announced that he was going to retire. So it's been an honor uh, to travel with him throughout this state. Uh, he's a great statesman, I, and I appreciate his service. I feel sorry for my Democrat counterpart. I don't know. I, I do, I do. And you want to know why? What do they have to brag about? Look at the people that I have to brag about. It's easy to work for them. 
I'm especially grateful to introduce to you now Martha McSally. The next senator from Arizona. giving some fiery speeches, talking about so many different issues. But I'll tell you what, I just want to share, I have a heart of humility right now uh, and a heart of gratitude. Uh, humility that I am in a position to be walking in the footsteps of giants. Giants who launched their campaigns here and finished their campaigns here. I mean, it's just extraordinary. I, I got to launch my campaign here on January 12th to about 10 months ago on the same day in the same tradition. And it's just an absolute honor to be now participating in this tradition. Again, following the footsteps, Barry Goldwater, Don McCain, and Senator Kyle as my mentor. I mean, it's just, uh, Honestly, I'm just so, so grateful for your support, and I'm so humbled to be here and be before you tonight. But you know what? We still have some work to do. We still have work to do. We've got 24 hours or so left, right? And you guys know I won my first election, well, the one that I won, by 167 votes. So my new call sign is now landslide, okay? <laughs> so I know better than anybody, and you all know in Yavapai County with your record 85% turnout, how every single vote really, really matters, right? Every vote matters. And up and down the ticket, we have this amazing slate of candidates, and we've all been traveling together and running together uh, with Governor Doug Ducey at our lead. It's just been an absolute honor to be campaigning. You know, my opponent, she doesn't actually want to be seen with the other Democrats on the ticket. It's actually kind of funny to just sort of watch. She's like, no, no, get out of the shot, man. You know, I don't want to be in there. You know, she's in the, the, Demo, you know, the liberal witness protection program right now, right? <laughs> she doesn't even put a D next to her name. And look, I mean, you, I'm not going to go through all this stuff. You know. I mean, this is the future of Arizona, and this is also about the future of our country, right? They know that the balance of the Senate majority, here we are with less than 24 hours ago, stands through Arizona. It goes through Arizona. And if we want to keep the economy going, an afterburner, because America and Arizona are back, you want to keep the economy going? If you want to keep making sure that we are going to rebuild our military and support our veterans, you want that? If you want to make sure that we secure our border, if you want to make sure we can keep confirming constitutional judges and justices like right? then I need your help in the next 24 hours. I need your help. I can't do it by myself, you know? We are still neck and neck right now, which is totally, like, seems ridiculous to a lot of people, but it just goes to show you with tens of millions of dollars poured into the campaign because they know how important this is for the country. So we got to get the vote out there, and we got to make sure that each of you go home, make some phone calls tonight, wake some people up tomorrow morning, send out some emails, do some Facebook posts, whatever else you can do. Take some people to the polls because it's really going to come down to turnout right now. Now. It's going to come down to that. And every last vote really does matter. And you know there's one last contrast here. Unlike my opponent who calls Arizona crazy, remember that? Unlike her, I love Arizona. I love Arizona. And I know you love Arizona too. I know that. And I am so grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for you to go to combat with us here in the battles for the future of our state and our country. I know you got my six, and I just ask you from the bottom of my heart, push through for another 24 hours. I will be absolutely honored and proud to represent you all in the Senate. Let's get to victory. God bless you all. You are better off now than you were two years ago. Four years ago. Got a little bit more money in your pockets. This state has had an incredible recovery. <clears throat> My family came to Arizona sometime in the 80s. Uh, that was the 1880s. Um, and it was interesting because there weren't a whole lot of people here in the territory at that time. Well, our governor has probably created more jobs than were in, that, in the state or in the territory of Arizona when my family showed up 
he is an amazing job creator, speaking CEO to CEO, inviting people to flee California, the high cost of doing business there, and to make Arizona their home. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Governor Doug Ducey. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for a smash mouth Republican victory tomorrow night? Are you ready to keep Arizona red? Are you ready to put Martha McSally in the United States Senate? Because Yavapai County is our secret weapon and we are counting on you. I want to say thank you to someone who I think is the best Republican Party chairman in the nation, Jonathan Lyons. And I want to say thank you so much. I mean, I can't believe Senator Kyle comes up to the podium and thanks me for asking him to go back to the United States Senate. Thank goodness that John Kyle is a patriot and a public servant. And because of his service, today we have Brett Kavanaugh on the United States Supreme Court. And I'm so grateful that Cindy McCain made the trip up here to Prescott. Because this is a sacred place and so much history has happened on these courthouse steps. Just two years ago, in 2016, we were here as we celebrated John McCain's third election to the United States Senate. 1964, Barry Goldwater announces his presidential run on these steps. And in 2008, John McCain ends his country first presidential campaign right here. John's memory remains close to all of us here in Arizona, and we hold it dearly. The McCain impact on our state is as true as the Grand Canyon is wide. And we are here with a heart of gratitude for the McCain. Cindy, the state of Arizona loves you. Now, in the spirit of John McCain, he would say, you've got a job to do. It's time to get to work. And we have a great ticket here. We have a great ticket. Now, let's remember where we were four years ago in this state, all right? Our budget was broken. Our education system was mired in lawsuits and our economy was flat. Today, that $1 billion budget deficit is a $1 billion surplus. The education lawsuits are behind us and our economy is booming. It is booming so much, we were able to get a 20% pay increase to our teachers without raising taxes. We've had 260,000 new private sector jobs. We've had, we've had 260,000 new private sector jobs in this state, 300, 300 companies that have moved or relocated here, and 200,000 people that have relocated to the state of Arizona. The last, time, the last time unemployment was this low, you were renting your movies at Blockbuster. Now there's an issue here. You know, Arizona has this deep, ruby red Republican reputation, and I'm proud of it. But I think we need to remember, President Donald Trump only won Arizona by three points. And those, those 200,000 people that I like to brag on that have moved here to Arizona, well, many of them were Californians. So I want to say to those Californians, welcome back to America. And remember that you left California for a reason. We want to protect our low tax, business friendly environment in the state of Arizona. So these races are closer than they should be. 
We want to keep the majority in the House of Representatives. That's why we're putting Ball Gosar back to the House. For, first in line to the governor is the Secretary of State, Steve Gaynor. I feel pretty healthy, but hey, let's not take any chances. Steve Gaynor needs to be in office. Mark Burnovich is the top cop as Attorney General. We want somebody who's a conservative, not someone who's beholden to Tom Steyer. Kimberly Yee is going to be the state treasurer. She's qualified to do it. We don't elect Democrats to the state treasurer's office. Let's make sure she's got a big margin. And Frank Riggs, it is so important in the superintendent of public instruction race, that is the top line item in our state budget. We want to have someone whose values and principles are aligned not only on educational excellence and school choice, but someone that knows that cops on campus will keep schools safer. His opponent doesn't want that. Vote Frank Riggs. But most of all, the country is watching Arizona to see what is going to happen in this United States Senate race. There's a reason these out-of-state billionaires are coming to Arizona. They believe that they can turn the United States Senate blue, and they're dreaming that they can do it through Arizona. Well, I've got news for them. They can keep dreaming because we couldn't have a better, more qualified candidate for the United States Senate, somebody who is an Air Force Academy graduate, the first female to fly in combat, someone who served 26 years in our nation's uniform and six deployments to the Middle East and Afghanistan. Let's send a message that Arizona is staying red and the United States Senate is staying Republican by voting Martha McSally into office. We're counting on you, Yellow Pie County. Let's deliver the vote. Let's have a big Republican celebration tomorrow, and let's vote Justin Olson in for Corporation Commission. Thanks so much.